eons of modern living. But there was a less visible cold transformation happening at the same time. This would also have a huge impact on urban life. The cooling of the air itself. Three centuries had passed since Cornelius Drebbel had shaken King James in Westminster. Now at the dawn of the 20th century, air cooling was about to shake the world. Tell me, what is the lowdown on this air conditioning thing? Now you've started something by asking me that. Air conditioning was about to transform modern life. The person largely responsible was Willis Carrier, who started off working for a company that made fans. Carrier is sent to Brooklyn for a very special job in 1902. The company that publishes the magazine Judge, one of the most popular full color uh, magazines in America at this particular time, is having a huge problem. It's July in Brooklyn, and the ink for which they, which they use on their beautiful covers is sliding off the pages. It will not stick because the humidity is too high. Carrier, using some principles that he's been developing as a young new employee of this fan company, finds a way to get out the July 1902 run of the Judge magazine. And from there, he begins to eventually build his air conditioning empire. It's based on a simple principle. Control of humidity through control of temperature. That was Willis Carrier's idea. He used refrigeration to cool the water vapor in the humid air. The vapor condensed into droplets, leaving the air dry and cool. The demand for air conditioning gradually grew. In the 1920s, movie houses were among the first to promote the benefits. People would flock there in summer to escape the heat. The movies are wildly popular. And the air conditioning certainly helps to attract an audience, especially if they happen to be walking down the street on a horribly hot day and they duck into this movie theater and have this wonderful experience. Air conditioning became increasingly common in the workplace too, particularly in the South, where textile and tobacco factories were almost unbearable without cooling. When employees breathe good air and feel comfortable, they work faster and do a better job. I think some people think that these were nice, um, you know, um, compassionate employers who were cooling down the workplace for the workers, but of course nothing could be further from the truth. That, that was, that was an, an inadvertent uh, byproduct, but actually this was an, a, a, a quality control device to control the breaking of fibers in, in, in cotton mills to, to get consistent you know, quality control in these various uh, um, industries to control the, the dust that had bedeviled uh, tobacco stemming room workers for um, for decades. Uh, I mean, I think the, 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 wor the workers uh, obviously went home and, and to their unair conditioned uh, shacks in most cases, and and uh, and talked about how nice and cool it was to working during during the day. It's silly to suffer from the heat when you can afford the modest cost of air conditioning. By the 1950s, people were air conditioning their homes with standalone window units that could be easily installed. This wasn't just an appliance, it offered a new, cool way of life. Walking down a, a typical southern street prior to the air conditioning revolution, you would have seen families, individuals outside. They would have been on their porches, on each other's porches. Uh, there was a visiting tradition, a real sense of community. Well, I think all that changes with air conditioning. You, you walk down that same street and basically what you'll hear are not the voices of people talking on the porch, you'll hear the whir of the compressors.
control of the cold has transformed city life. Refrigeration helped cities expand outwards by enabling large numbers of people to live at great distances from their source of food. Air conditioning enabled cities to expand upwards. Beyond 20 stories, high winds make open windows impractical. But with air conditioning, 100-story skyscrapers were possible. Technologies emerge which not only worked to insulate human society against the evils of cold, but turned cold into a productive, manageable, effective resource. On the one hand, the steam engine. On the other, the refrigerator. Those two great symbols of 19th century world, which completely changed the society and economy of the planet. All that is part of, I think, what we could call bringing coal to market, turning it from an evil agent that you feared into a force of nature from which you could profit.